my con story. I feel like it's so average, but then it really got me in the gut, right? In about 2004, 2005, I'd saved up money. You know, I'd, my life was all about like, I'll never take a loan. Everything that I want, I'll buy it cash. So I'd saved up money and I was looking for my first car. And in that period of time, I remember I was one of those chicks who used to just like think that the fact that feminist, the feminist movement had happened mm -hmm. meant that I had to show off my ability to get what I wanted as a woman. So I bumped into a guy at a club and he looked fantastic. And I hit on him, I bought him a drink, I asked him out on a first date. And we met at the Stanley where he promptly bought me a glass of juice that should have been the clue to the con. So I'm looking for a car and I'm just telling everyone about it. So when I tell him, he's like, oh, I'm a car dealer. <laughs> so Mr. Car Dealer and I now start discussing what kind, what kind of car do I want. I'm feeling his vibe, so I'm very sexually attracted to him. And then he's being the guy who's not allowing me to have sex with him. So that's frustrating me on a sexual front, right? But also making me wonder, is he a keeper? You know? So I decide, I trust him at some point and I give him 250,000 shillings to go to Mombasa. He's shown me pictures of a car to come and bring this car to, from Mombasa to Nairobi. Already, at that point, I should have known I was going to get COVID, right? But I didn't know. I had no idea how to buy a car. It was the first time I didn't ask anyone for advice. I thought I should do it myself. So I give him the money. He goes off. He's talking to me throughout this whole period. Gets to the coast. He's talking to me. Gets to the car. Takes pictures of the car. He's talking to me. He's driving back. I don't hear from him. Ever. Again. Please note, I was tuning this guy. He had taken me to his mom's house. He had taken me to a swanky office in Westlands that was his. So I start by those taking those steps. I go to his mom's house. His mom doesn't remember me, doesn't know who I am. She refuses to open the gate for me. I go to the office in Westlands. Another company works there. It is with the asking Robert, who? which is the name of the guy who had conned me. I've never, 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 never heard from him. I reported the matter to the cops. They looked for him, said they couldn't find him. A few years later, I'm doing casting and I find this guy now is conning people. He's an actor. So he's on a TV show and I call the producer of that TV show and I say, Chick, you're getting conned. In that melee of trying to figure out um, who this guy was, if his stuff was real, if he is a con man for real, he'd already conned about four or five guys in the production that he was working for. Many years later, I find a com uh, an advertisement in the newspaper that says that there's a pastor in town who's going to pray for single women, to get into couples, into marriages. And it's this guy, Robert who's now a pastor. So I find a con his contact and I call him and I'm like, dude, do you still have my 250,000 shillings? Oh, nee, nee. oh, in fact, I'm born again. Oh, in fact, I want to make amends. Oh, in fact, let's meet at Trattoria on Wednesday at seven o'clock and I'll give you back your money. <laughs> Fool that I was, where was I? Trattoria, seven o'clock on that day, waiting for this guy who never turned up. The cops say that it's too late now, too many years have passed with the statute of, on, of limitations on, on something like this. So I can't go after him now, but every time I've thought that I've managed to get him and get my money back from him, I managed to spill out of my fingers. Hey guys, Janjaruka, do not get conned. I'm done. I'm going to leave Mafia Kuku. There isn't a baby who fell like you. Look out for Janja Roka the series coming soon online.